I was checking some stuff online and I was seeing this whole HS2 moniker being banded around and I wasn't really sure what was going on. What the hell is HS2? What the hell is this, right? And essentially HS2 was a government program that was um, first put forward by the Labour Party in order to connect parts of Northern England with other parts of Northern England. And the idea or the premise behind it was that there's um, long been um, said in the UK that there's a big North and South divide. A lot of the government, especially here in the House of Commons, care a lot about what happens in the South, but rarely care about improving the lives of people that live in the North outside of London. And they said that this rail line would be the first step into kind of repairing those um, rifts and kind of doing right by people in the north by connecting them with high speed rails. And the idea behind it would that it would increase, I think it would decrease the time it takes to get to London to Manchester. At the moment now is, I think it's an hour 30 or maybe two hours. But I think I saw somewhere along the lines of this particular new train would take um, maybe an hour to get from London to Manchester. But the other thing that was really um, beneficial about it was that it would connect other parts of northern england with other parts of it so you'd be able to go from manchester to leeds really quickly manchester to birmingham really quickly so essentially what that would do you would hope is that it would ease the pressure on the other lines so that you could have people if they wanted to go directly to birmingham they would need to jump on the other lines are a bit slower they'd go on a speedier train and then that would allow you to have a way more um you know consistent and reliable service because even though our train lines are very old even though they're incredibly over prescribed a lot of the reason why they kind of break down a lot is because of the traffic there's just too many people and too much demand for it um, all you know all around the clock so obviously high-speed rails would help to alleviate some of that even if the price is super high it would obviously help to just alleviate some of that pressure and i think the same could be said for clubs that's why i've kind of always um pushed for the idea of we need to have way more nightclubs in london especially that are maybe like fold or a bit bigger so maybe like 1000 capacity plus right and maybe just fall underneath the 1500 capacity so that what would happen if you have one of those clubs per area in london north west and south and they all open until six it will take the strain away from some of the other clubs and most likely what it would do i think inadvertently is that it would always also um decrease antisocial behavior because people can if they want to go out and stay out after four or after 2 a.m they can go to this club which is similar to fold that's what we have here in east london and then if they want to flip and go home early, they can. But they're not kind of put into a corner where they have to kind of make the night work at a club that's only open until four. And then that leads to just a whole hodgepodge of people all congregating in one space and it gets really crazy. But again, what do I know? So we continue. Well, unfortunately, that HS2 line, cut to the BBC here, has now been scrapped. And this to me has been another reminder of the, H of the fucking North-South divide. And embarrassingly enough for me, I only really realized this north-south divide was a thing when COVID was happening. I never even bothered to pay too much mind about it. But when COVID happened and we had all these weird um, lockdown restrictions and you can only go out at certain times and stuff. I remember there was a time when they were doing lockdowns based on the area that you were in. And for some reason, all the time, the North always got the rough end of the stick. They always got the short end of the stick, sorry. They'd always get um, a restriction that meant that they weren't, op they weren't able to open bars, restaurants, whatever it may be. So basically, loads of local businesses in the North kind of, kind of basically went down and under and i think if you have been traveling to the north anytime soon parts of liverpool and manchester you would have seen over the last few years especially if you went there pre-covid a lot of the stores and shops i remember seeing when i went there before covid when you go there after covid most of them are gone it's pretty depressing going to those places it's, not, it's always a bit humbling when you go to those places because it's definitely not as busy and as kind of you know whatever as london is of course with the shops and shit but there's definitely been um an impact with covid you can see that in you know the lockdowns the restrictions all these sort of stuff has definitely negatively impacted a lot of the people so you can only imagine some people who are thinking hey this hs2 line could give us a lifeline it could allow us to maybe um connect to different parts of, of the uk it could even increase things like i'm interested in clubs maybe there's people in london who actually want to go clubbing in manchester and liverpool and birmingham and newcastle and stuff but don't because there's no high-speed lines because a lot of the lines that you're going on they're stopping at every fucking stop between here and manchester and it just doesn't make it worthwhile to try and go there in the morning and come back or in the night and come back early morning but maybe with a high-speed rail even if it is really expensive you can justify doing a big day trip like people do in europe that's the one thing that i really um 
think that I didn't take advantage of when we were still in the EU, like Erasmus and just traveling around flipping. Um, Erasmus, obviously the education thing where you could go in and study in different colleges and places around Europe and stuff in your gap year or whatever you wanted to do. And also the ability to just go traveling around Europe. Because I think now, um, if I'm not mistaken, with us being out of Europe, I think I've only got 30 days basically to travel without having a visa and stuff, which obviously isn't long enough if you want to do a really long sort of like trip around um, parts of Europe and just connect with trains and shit. But that's something that I heard of a lot of people who I'm friends with who kind of go out in the night, who are part of the nightlife scene, who just live in Europe. They say that's a big part of their fucking you know of their scene of their culture of jumping on trains and going to you know different countries because it's fucking europe and you're all landlocked you could just quickly jump on the train and head to poland jump on the train head to romania go to fucking ukraine when there wasn't any war go to georgia all these different places and just have a good time rave wherever and still come back in the morning without getting any accommodation you know what i mean you could actually go and have a good time that way so and obviously in the process visit all these interesting places around europe um but obviously um we don't really have that ability to do that in london most mostly because you have to get hotels or in the UK mostly because of the tr we don't really have a lot of fast connecting trains to the north we have a lot of fast connecting trains that take you to parts of the south and stuff to connect to Dover to go to you know the Eurotunnel and whatnot but not a lot of places going up north so that's a bit of bit, been a big shame but anyway let me read the article here courtesy of BBC it says Rishi Shunak would announce the scrapping of the HS2 high-speed rail line from the West Midlands to Manchester on Wednesday um, in his Conservative Party conference speech, the PM is expected to set out a range of alternative projects in the north of England and Wales. He is likely to argue that these projects will be better value for money and can be delivered more quickly. From what I've read online, the whole reason why this has been over, you know, they spent too much money and they have to scrap it now, is because, if I'm not mistaken, they try to do too much. I think when you're trying to basically do these type of projects, they say that you should try to do them in small increments. So instead of trying to deliver the entire network um, overhaul and change, you should try to build a station first, then the railway, then another station, then, the, you know, make sure the trains are okay, then whatever connecting place that you need. You're meant to be doing them all in tiny little projects in increments. But when you try and do it all as one big project, and you're also using using loads of different um, contractors and stuff to kind of fulfill some of the things and obviously the contractors need different types of lawyers different types of red tape it's just an it's just a breeding ground for delays exploitation scamming probably yeah you know i mean there's a lot of stuff going on there so it's obviously starting to cost way too much money and they decide to scrap it but the argument for the people in the north is that there's a lot of things that waste a lot of money there's a lot of things that they probably overpaid for that they still go through with and they just found it easier to scrap this because it's something to do with the north um which is really interesting to kind of dive on deep on it continues here it says rumors could be it, rumors it could be scrapped um have already prompted anger among local leaders and businessmen labor manchester mayor andy burnham who's a fucking g um ditching a link to the city would be a permanent state statement to people in the north that they were second class citizens when it comes to transport which is basically true and um, it's brutal but i saw it during covid there was definitely a different type of treatment given to the north and um, vis-a-vis the, the south when covid was happening for some reason which was utterly bizarre especially when i remember there was one particular time the north had better numbers than us like they had l less you know less people getting infected whatever it may be but they still were had to be locked down for a certain amount of time and i was like jesus christ um the conservative west midland mayor andy street who on monday called the impromptu press conference at the party conference to warn sunak that getting rid of hs2 would amount to cancelling the future is said to be distraught by the news of the prime minister's decision the football club Manchester United was among 30 businesses which wrote to Prime Minister urging him to commit to a line and avoid economic self-sabotage. It had hoped the HS2 would cut journey times, create more space for rail network and boost jobs outside of London. That's true because you would imagine, because I remember one time when I was working at this company that was like an art supplies company and there was a lady that was working there with me um, in the lab, sorry, at the company at the, in the lab and she was living in Birmingham at the time and this place I used to work at was next to like Labrook Grove so like West London basically London right and she lived in Birmingham and she was commuting back and forth from Birmingham every single day insane thing to do because I'm sure that rail ticket must have been crazy because if there's one thing about the UK we have decent trains we have decent underground um, oh, the underground is really good, but the prices, the seasonal ticket prices are crazy. So I can imagine she must have been paying 
I don't know. She has been playing easily a, more than a grand a month um, to fucking go from Birmingham to London and then London to Birmingham every single day using that to commuter train. So imagine how beneficial it would have been to have a high speed rail line going from London to parts of the north. It would have maybe allowed people to actually have jobs, full time jobs going back and forth and be able to go on those type of trains, even if it's expensive. Because people are doing it now with the shit trains. Imagine if you've got a direct train that only needs stops twice in the middle. So it's, it's, it's really, uh, as much as it would cost them a lot of money to do it, it's also going to have ramifications with the economy, you know, that are going to be felt for maybe many, many years to come. That's the actual crazy thing about it. Um, however, there have been concerns about the mounting cost of the infrastructure project with the latest estimates of the project um, amounting to about 71 billion. But it was in 2019 prices um so it doesn't not account for the spike in cost of materials and wages for example in recent months last month's defense secretary grant shaps said that it will be crazy not to review the project particularly given the rise in inflation deputy chair and conservative pro hearty lee anderson has described hs2 as a bad gamble not really i think it's a good gamble but unfortunately now you know you probably couldn't um you probably couldn't what's that thing called you probably couldn't account for the economy going the way it did or maybe you could i'm not really too sure but if you're looking to gear up to a general election, which is happening very soon here in the UK, you'd think, but again, the UK is odd, much like America. Sometimes people vote against their best interest. So I would say this is not the best tactic to go into a general election, but you never know. The Conservatives might win by a landslide still, even though they've pissed off half of the nation. You know what I mean? It might just still be okay for them. Who knows? And there's obviously Rishi Sunak in the middle, our fucking beleaguered and inept and bit clueless fucking Prime Minister. It continues to say the route was initially proposed in 2010 and given a go-ahead in 2012. And then the Transport Secretary, Justin Greening, said it was the most significant transport infrastructure project since the building of the motorways. So this was pro proposed in 2010. And Go Ahead was in 2012, so more than 20 years, and it's only been cancelled now. Obviously, you have to account for COVID, three and a half years, cool. But Jesus Christ, bro, it shows you just how slow government moves, isn't it? The wheels of government are just as slow as the wheels of law. It's just insane, bro, how long shit takes to get done. Like, absolutely insane. There have already been delays, disruption, a big cut to HS2 Eastern Leg and a salami slicing of HS2, but this later decision will change the project to its outcomes beyond recognition. At least 22 billion has already been spent building the London to Birmingham section, while 22, while 2.3 billion has gone towards the second phase on things such as buying up land and property. So they already built it, half of the line, and now they're just going to scrap it because they can't go through with the rest of it. Jesus Christos. 5,000 people are already working in HS2, mostly in supply chain. There's also been uh, people's lives who have already been uprooted by property purchases along the HS2 route to Birmingham. Mr. Sunak announces that the HS2 two trains will go to Manchester using existing tracks. It follows that no extra space will be created and journey time benefits will be reduced. Jesus Christos, bro. So that's the planned route that they were going to look for to go. So you'd see here from London to Houston, where I'm in, I'm in London, and this train will be able to go all the way, all the way up to Birmingham, parts of the, obviously, Manchester and whatnot, Liverpool. But now it's all been flipping cancelled. And obviously the one to Leeds got cancelled. And all these are major cities outside of London. Major cities that you would imagine, you know, um, would be bolstered by having the connection to London be so quick. Um, it would kind of increase business all around these big cities and shit. But unfortunately, they scrapped it. In recent days, there have been suggestions that instead of building HS2, the money can be put towards improving the rail east works in London, England. <laughs> exactly. But improving is a big broad term what does improve improvement mean does that mean having a shelter on the train stations does improving mean installing wi-fi more bins benches improvement when it comes to government stuff is it's a lot of shit i remember there was one particular um article i read about some big government thing that they spent millions on i think in somewhere in la and it just amounted to these weird lamppost things that had these weird shelter things on the top of it i don't know what the point of it was but that was a big project that they spent millions and millions in so the amount of um delays in government and the amount of misuse of funds is pretty pretty high and i'm sure a lot of it has to do with people getting stuff in brown envelopes i'm sure of it i'm sure because i don't i can't in, in, you know my common sense brain can't imagine that there's that many inept um and dumb people within government all working there at the same time i'm sure most of it just happens to just be like one of those things where it's sort of like working in the you know in the building industry 
delays are just part of the business because the business is making money. And if you want to make money, you add delays to make the job longer. Do you know what I mean? So maybe it's just part of government. It's just like an in, it's just an intrinsic part of what they do, by the way. It's one of those things. What people say is like, it's a bug, not a, it's a feature, not a bug kind of type of thing. I wonder if that's the case. But again, um, thoughts and feelings go out to my people up there in the north of England. Um, absolutely heinous that this is happening. They should have just went through with it anyway, regardless of the cost. It's already over budget. So what does another 20 fucking billion really gonna do and it really and i think it would have honestly reaped its rewards it would have been amazing for the north it would have opened up the entire country um especially for places like manchester where i'm thinking about warehouse project that big club that's there that i've always wanted to go to that could have you know i'm sure there's a whole economy of people who travel around england i don't necessarily do it because i usually prefer to go to festivals um in europe because they're way more cost effective but i'm sure there are people in england who do like road trips or do train trips to go to festivals or clubs around england um experience different things and shit and that would have opened up the entirety of england to do that maybe even you know open up for you to go to places like scotland maybe going from scotland from the middle uh, from the mid um uh from the north of england is a bit easier or midlands whatever than it is from london who knows but now it's been cancelled and now you know the fucking focus will be back on flipping london and you know what they do here and stuff and don't let there come out any report that they misuse funds or anything or that they're planning to do something else crazy like that's why i'm saying now if they approve that sphere in london people are gonna go off imagine they're scrapping that entire plan to connect parts of north england midlands of england right that are usually overlooked and ignored right they're gonna they cancel this entire plan now imagine if they scrap this and they decide to install that same sphere that they have in las vegas in london which allegedly is the plan there's meant to be a plan to have this same sphere they have in las vegas um set up in london also but they haven't got planning permission being approved yet and it costs i don't know billions to fucking get it done it's obviously very nice and great to look at but just imagine how angry you would be if you live in the north and they approved the planning application for this and they gave the people that are building it you know subsidies and shit oh you'd be so angry you'd be so angry bro so 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 angry so